You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Welcome. You are listening to watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm Carrie Lutz. It's uh, mid-December and the markets are looking very chilly out there, although we did get a nice bounce in the stock market. But where has all the silver gone? It's not at the Comex. We know that for sure. And here to figure, help us figure this out is our good friend from milesfranklin.com, Andy Schechtman. Andy, great to have you back on. So, so we got a silver situation in the COMEX, huh? Yeah, well, not just in the COMEX. Also, we have the exact same thing happening in the London Metals Exchange. But speaking of the COMEX, yeah, uh, you know, the, the total silver inventories fell yet again last week to <clears throat> just over 290 million ounces. That's down almost 4 million ounces for the week last week. Uh, it's another, uh, yet another three-year low. And... When you look at the gold holdings, they fell again by uh, roughly 200,000 ounces to just over 23 and a half million ounces, another two and a half year low. If you look at silver coming off of the London Metals Exchange, carry, it's at the lowest level, that being the inventory in London, that they have ever, ever, ever had since they started keeping records. If you look at the silver inventory on COMEX, what you see is a 18 month drawdown of the registered category, which are the bars that are available for delivery from about 130 million ounces to about 33 million. We've lost 100 million ounces in 18 months that have been delivered off the exchange. Now, this is the important characteristic here. It's not that they were transferred into eligible. It means they were delivered away from COMEX, which strips away their liquidity from an industrial perspective, where if Elon Musk says, I'll pay $12 premium on every ounce of silver that people want to sell in their 1,000-ounce bars, you could not transact that deal um, the way that it is right now because you would have to first get your bars back into the system, have them reassayed and and, and um, you know, put back in as eligible bars, or in this case, registered, uh, and it would uh, it would just take too long. So these bars that are leaving represent a one way ticket out. And you know, you could say the same thing about gold, where we've seen in the last several months on one day, forty five percent of all the kilo gold bars that back the Comex mini contract delivered off the exchange in one day. It's about twenty six million ounces in one day. Who the hell's got that kind of bread? A couple of weeks ago, 5% of the 100-ounce gold bars delivered in one day off of COMEX. And so what we are seeing is a systematic, um, really, uh, withdrawal of all the gold and silver off the exchanges. And so I would, I would say to people, look, you know, a lot of people will say, well, you know, why has gold and silver not done better in the midst of a war and 40-year high inflation? Question. And, yeah. And, and, you know... My answer would be if price was indicative of value and demand, then who the hell is draining such copious amounts of metal off of the exchanges? We see an article that uh, ironically came out uh, a couple of weeks ago by Bloomberg and by uh, Reuters and, and, and also came out from the World Gold Council. And it was titled The, the Gold Whales. And it the article, actually, I kind of got a kick out of the, the Gold Whale article because, first of all, it talked about the amount of metal that had been delivered off of COMEX uh, over the past year and, um, and over the third quarter as well. And when you talk about the third quarter, it talked about that 400 tons of gold had left the, um, the vaults of the U.S., here uh, in the third quarter. And that was in terms of its size represented uh, the largest quarter ever on record. In fact, the largest quarter on record in terms of deliveries before um, was uh, um, 241 tons. And now we're at 400 tons. It's 340% higher than quarter 
3 2021. So stuff's literally disappearing in terms of year to date. We've seen 673 tons shipped out of the COMEX, um, which is higher than any other year on total since 1967. And there's still two weeks left in the year. So what we are seeing is a drawdown of all of the supply, not just of silver, but of gold. And the interesting thing about the article was that Bloomberg called the buyers mystery whales, uh, postulated that the mystery buyers were either China, Russia, Saudi Arabia, or India. Now, where the hell have we heard those names before? Oh, yeah, the BRICS nations that are literally gobbling up all of the gold and have already told us they're going to issue a new world reserve currency peg to commodities. They're the ones buying it all. And the interesting thing about it was that of the 400 tons delivered, only 120 tons had were ha had uh, buyers attached to them. They knew who they were registered to. 280 tons or, or two thirds of all of the, the gold that was delivered were mystery buyers. And here, here they're telling you that they think it is these countries. China came out last week and admitted that they are one of the mystery buyers that they have increased their gold holdings. And it's interesting that they don't increase their gold holdings hardly ever, yet they're the biggest in terms of public information. Now, why the hell would they want to tell us mm -hmm. or anyone else how much gold they have? Their numbers are woefully under what ours are uh, in, in terms of official numbers. Ours are like 8,300 tons, which hasn't been audited since 1956. China's numbers were you know, thousands of tons below that, yet guys like Alistair McLeod, who I believe is one of the smartest guys in the universe, tells us that he believes that they have 38,000 tons, 20,000 owned by the, the people or by the state and 18,000 tons by the people. That'd be five times more than we supposedly have held at Fort Knox. So the bottom line, Carrie, is it's not just silver, it's gold also. And all of this metal that is being delivered is being delivered off of the exchanges, which removes the, the immediate liquidity from an industrial perspective. And it's going eastward to, to um, you know, back what I believe will be a new system predicated upon commodities, as old Tan Poser calls it, uh, Bretton Woods 3, rather than our Western system that is, is dominated by debt instruments. And so, yeah, it's, it's a big deal. But where is it all going? It's going eastward and it's never coming back. And that is something we should all be concerned about, whether you own gold or not. You should understand that this is posturing for what ultimately is the beginning of a new system and the end of another. All right. So, well, you know, these transitions uh, never are seamless. They're very messy. Wars, depressions, all of this. Um, to think that uh, somehow China is going to save us, uh, probably not going to happen. Uh, so what do you do here, Andy? You, you become your own central bank. You become your own uh, pension fund. You become your own insurance company. Uh, you look at, at gold and silver as wealth, not as an investment. Certainly, if you own enough of it, you will be wealthy. But you can see the biggest money in the world is draining the supply of metal from the top on down, which betrays the rhetoric, which betrays the manipulated price. It's also interesting to note that, you know, the commercial banks who have been the, the entities that have suppressed the price of gold and silver forever, their traditional method of doing so was shorting a rising market, which no one ever does unless you have pockets that are deeper than everyone else's. The way that you short something is a falling market. You jump on the on the bandwagon and you short and it pushes the prices yeah, lower. Even more. If you short the rising market, you better damn well have enough money and have a real good idea of what's going to happen because you put yourself up to unlimited losses otherwise. And what is very interesting is that for the past 40 years, the commercial banks have been the main entity shorting the rising price. Gold has risen by over $200 in the last few months, and the commercial banks that typically short it have not joined in. The commercial entities are shorting the price, but they're not the big banks. Question is, which commercial entities are they that are shorting the price that have taken over for the banks? And the way that I look at it is that these banks have set a trap, uh, and they're setting a trap for anyone dumb enough to short a market, uh, a metals market in this environment. And so what we are seeing are the commercial banks not adding on to their short positions at all. In fact, to a large degree, are long in COMEX futures or much longer than they've ever been. But as we've seen the commercial category increase their shorts, it is not from the big banks. It's from other entities 
that are in the commercial category. And what confuses people is the definition of commercial as it pertains to the COMEX, which means a company like mine, Miles Franklin, who, who uh, buys and sells futures contracts for legitimate per business purposes to hedge our portfolio, we're considered a commercial. Uh, the commercial banks, on the other hand, Goldman, JP City, B of A, they're a whole different animal all to themselves. They are commercials as well. They are the ones that have controlled the price of the market through the futures manipulation. We use the futures market in the spirit of which it was originally designed, and that is to offset risk and to hedge our inventory. So interesting times for sure. Uh, may you live in interesting times being a Chinese curse, I'm sure you know. <laughs> we and know I really well. think we ain't seen anything yet, Kerry. Hey, so Andy, uh, you're Joe Sixpack, you're Steve Chardonnay, you see the handwriting on the wall. What are you supposed to do? Don't just survive, thrive. The Financial Survival Network. Torque Resources is an exploration company establishing a portfolio of premier copper gold early stage projects in Chile. Torque's management and technical teams have a strong track record of raising capital, discovery, and monetization of exploration successes. The company's Margarita Copper Gold project is located within the prolific coastal Cordillera Belt in Chile, which hosts some of the world's largest and most profitable copper mines. The Margarita project possesses excellent discovery potential for a major copper discovery due to the strength of the alteration system, large-scale magnetic targets, and the presence of copper oxide mineralization. Drilling is anticipated to begin in Q3 of this year. Torque trades in Canada under TORQ and on the OTC under TRBMF. To learn more, go to TorqueResources.com. That's TorqueResources.com. This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever. Mitigate your debt best you can. Get out of debt, first and foremost. Before you buy an ounce of gold and silver, get out of debt, especially variable rate debt, which will reset at higher levels as rates increase. Um, prepare for tough times. Even before you buy gold and silver, make sure you have food and water and something to protect your family with. And you've, you've dotted your I's and crossed your T's. If you can get out of debt as much as possible, you know, a mortgage at three or 4% that most people got over the last decade, those are good. Uh, because you're well below the rate of inflation. That's free money. But anything else in terms of variable rate debt, get out if you can. Uh, get prepared for tough times, for supply chain distortions, for you know the U.S. running low on, on diesel fuel, for the U.S. running into trouble with the world reserve currency, for whatever it may be. Be prepared. Once you have your house in order, start accumulating gold and silver, not as an investment, but as wealth that has outlived uh, you know, two world wars, German hyperinflation, the Great Depression, every pandemic that ever was own silver right now because it is the most undervalued commodity on the planet. And look at it as wealth that will protect you, whether it be inflation or deflation. And, you know, because in inflation, we all know what gold and silver are supposed to do. But in deflation, what they represent are assets that are not simultaneously someone else's liability. So having things that remove counterparty risk that are outside the matrix of a dollar or the dollar market, um, staying away from variable rate debt or cleaning it up if you can. These are all things that you can do and should be doing. Um, here again, you're owning gold and silver not to get wealthy, but because it is wealth. And that's the most important thing that, that I can say, because if you look at the biggest money in the world, if price was indicative of value, then who the hell is draining all of the world's supply? Who can take 26 million ounces of gold like that in one day? Who can withdraw 100 million ounces of silver over the last 18 months? Why is it that the London Metals Exchange has its lowest level of inventory in the history of the exchange? 140-year-old exchange since they started keeping inventory numbers, the lowest. Where is it all going? People like um, guys that I respect that follow the markets. And I like this case. You'll, you'll, you're going to laugh when I say it because it's. It, he uses the name Turd Ferguson. He's our friend. Oh, yeah. Uh, Craig Hemp. Craig Hemp. Oh, yeah. Good. Uh, Frequent Craig guest on the show. Yeah, he's so darn good. And and Craig wrote an article not long ago basically saying if the, if the deliveries continue at this level off of LME, that they'll be out of silver by mid-2023. Um, and look, there's only 35 million ounces or 33 million ounces on the registered category in silver on COMEX. India is going to import over 300 million ounces this year. 
So how is it that the price setting mechanism of the world only has one tenth of what India will import this year? Most of it already been shipped. So All right. yeah, these are interesting times for sure. What can Joe Sixpack and Joe Chardonnay do? They can do what the biggest money in the world is doing, and that is de-dollarize right. best so we can. What should they start? If you're a beginning gold silver buyer, how do you start? One ounce silver buffalo rounds. Uh, one ounce silver uh, Krugerrands or Britannias or kangaroos. Stay away from the eagles. They're too expensive. Just one ounce gold and silver coins or rounds that are widely accepted and sought after. You don't need to get fancy. You just want to have the bullion. And having it in a one ounce variety is, is the way to start. It, once you have an, a nice uh, inventory already put together, you can go into bigger items. But you don't want to be penny wise and pound foolish from the get go, ignoring the importance of utility and versatility. So, yeah, I, I would say, what, who start? Where do you start? You start with one ounce silver, and if you can afford it, one ounce gold. And get on a, a, a systematic routine. When I started this company with my father 33 years ago, I was 19 years old, and I was told there was one rule and only one rule in joining business with my dad, and 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 that would be I have to buy something every two weeks. I laughed and said, fine. Uh, I've owned the company for two decades. He's been retired. He's he's still my father and my best buddy. And so I've honored my promise to my dad. And I buy something every two weeks. Every two weeks, I have never missed a two-week period in 33 years. It is not to get wealthy. It is wealth to me. I look at it as something I hope I never need to use. Not just for an, an emergency, as everyone thinks that's what gold and silver for. It could be an opportunity when the dust settles. Maybe it's it's that property that I want to buy up in northern Minnesota on the lake that I've always wanted to own that's going to sell at a third of what it's going for now as interest rates rise. Or maybe it's uh, blue chip stocks that are trading at single digit P.E. ratios and paying an 8 percent dividend. Who knows? If not, I'll give it to my kids someday. And I know that long after the money in our wallet is hanging from a frame in the Smithsonian as an example of what used to be gold and silver will still be immutable wealth just the way it was 5,000 years ago, it will be in the year 3002. So that that to me is, is my plan and I stick to it and I buy no matter what, whether it's five ounces of silver or 50 ounces of gold, it doesn't matter. I buy something every two weeks and I have for 33 years. And that is the way you get ahead. You pay yourself first, as my grandfather always used to say, always, you pay your bills, you pay them best you can, but you sure. pay yourself first. Your creditors, will understand if you aren't able to pay the full amount this month, you pay what you can, you be respectful, but you first take care of yourself and your family, or you never get off that wheel ever. You never get ahead. So you start by paying yourself, then your obligations. And, and that's the only way to ever get off this, this, this uh, squirrel wheel that, you know, um, it, it's tough to do, but paying yourself first is the best advice I can give people. All right. Well, we like that. We appreciate it, Andy. Uh... So as far as what you should buy, you know, somebody's got like a couple thousand bucks, wants to buy some silver, probably better off buying silver than gold. No question about it. No question about it. Send us an email at info at Miles Franklin. Mention the Financial Survival Network in the email. We'll make sure your listeners are getting the most competitive price in America in our personalized service. Now, I've been telling everyone since August that our new website is days away. And it's been the most frustrating thing I've ever dealt with in my career. I, I can't stand website developers, to be honest with you. And if you're out there, I'm sorry to have cast a wide net there, but they've been the bane of my existence for six months. Uh, it looks like we're going to uh, launch our new website internally tomorrow. Uh, hey, I would hope it's perfect I, timing, man. Yes. Just in time for Christmas. I would like to hope that by next week, and we may end up pushing it to the first of the year purposely uh -huh. and launch everything Jan 1, but we're there. We're 99.999% we're of the way done, and we're going to open it up to our office over the weekend to find holes and to place orders and whatnot, beta test, if you will. Uh, but uh, that will offer, you know, our current website, milesfranklin.com, lacks any transparency in pricing, and we closed our web store long ago. This new site will offer up to the moment pricing and the ability to purchase online. Uh, for your listeners, it will be milesfranklin.com forward slash financial survival network, but we're not there yet. Real soon. In the meantime, send us an email at info at Miles Franklin with any questions you have or for a current price inventory list, we'll send it to you. And uh, if you'd like to be contacted by myself or one of our brokers, let us know. We'll answer your questions. Make sure you give us your phone number. 
and uh, we will, in a very non-obligatory way, make it a good experience. And uh, I love being here with you, Gary. Always have, and Likewise. look forward to picking up where we left off after the first of the year. But info of Miles Franklin mention the Financial Survival Network. Check back Jan one for milesfranklin.com. You'll see a new fancy site with bells and whistles Great. and the ability to purchase online. Excellent. Oh, we love it. We love you being on the show. Got a question for Andy? Shoot us an email, kl at carrylutz.com. Remember, this is the only place where I buy metal from. Miles Franklin, been buying metal from you, Andy, for over a decade now. And uh, luckily held on to most of it, other than a couple of tax bills and a couple of weddings. I managed to hold on to most of my metal. And uh, hey, if you got a question, like I said, shoot me an email, kl at carrylutz.com. Andy, always a pleasure. We'll talk Likewise, to you again my soon. Friend. You stay well. Happy holidays. Happy, healthy New Year, Kerry, to you and everyone out there. And um, thanks for having me on. It's always a pleasure. And I'll look forward to seeing you again next time. All right. You got it. Thanks for listening to Kerry Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.